Oak Supremacy News. This is one of the central features of American politics over the last two years, a, a kind of mystery in some ways we keep coming back to. Why won't Republican politicians, now that he's out of office, throw Donald Trump overboard for their own good politically, if for no other reason? There's a bunch of answers to that question. We've gone through them here. The ex-president still rakes in a lot of fundraising dollars, for one. Many Republicans think they need him. They need Trump to excite the Trump MAGA base and turn out their voters. A whole bunch of others in the Republican Party are just genuinely true believers. They like Trump. They like Trumpism. They like the whole shtick. But there's another major factor, and it's one that always looms over Republican politics and playing into these dynamics, which is that if you cross Donald Trump and his base, you will likely find yourself in a vortex of debilitating harassment, threats of violence, and maybe even actual violence. Remember what happened to Rusty Bowers? It's the conservative pro-life speaker of the Arizona House who refused to go along with Donald Trump's coup and overturn the will of the voters in his state. He was pressured again and again and again, and he said no again and again. I cannot break my oath to the Constitution, nor my faith. He delivered incredibly compelling testimony before the January 6th committee, detailing the threats he faced and the lies spewed about him in his own community while his daughter lay dying of cancer inside his home. We have various groups come by and they have had um, video panel trucks with videos of me proclaiming me to be a pedophile and a pervert and a corrupt and politician and blaring uh, loudspeakers in my neighborhood and leaving literature both on my property but arguing and threatening with neighbors and with myself. At the same time, on some of these, we had a daughter who was gravely ill, who was upset by what was happening outside. Just one example of what can happen if you don't bend to Donald Trump's will. In this case, bend to his demand that you foment a coup, that you go along with it. And the ex-president knows this at some level. I think he does. And he regularly walks just up to the line of making explicit threats. Just yesterday, he did it again, warning conservative radio host Hugh Hewitt of what could happen if he is indicted. I'm just asking, if there is such a prosecutor and they indict you, would that deter you from running for president again? I don't think the people of the United States would stand for it. And as you know, if a thing like that happened, I would have no prohibition against running. You know that. You've already I do. Seen. And that's what I want people to understand. That would not take you out of the arena. It would not. But I think if it happened, I think you'd have problems in this country, the likes of which perhaps we've never seen before. I don't think the people of the United States would stand for it. What kind of problems, Mr. President? I think they'd have big problems. Big problems. I just don't think they'd stand for it. They will not, they will not sit still and stand for this ultimate of hoaxes. You know that the legacy media will say you're attempting to incite violence with that statement. How do you respond to what will inevitably... That's not, that's not inciting. I'm just saying what my opinion is. I don't think the people of this country would stand for it. it there's a lot there, right? Um, so notice how when Trump promises, quote, big problems, Hewitt understands that he is threatening violence, right? Immediately. He, he knows what Donald Trump is saying, even though he's a, not part of the legacy media. He gives Trump the opportunity to walk that back, to protect himself, right? You want to say that? The ex-president, the subject of his interview. Because, of course, everyone who listens to that clip understands exactly what Trump means when he says big problems. He means there will be blood. That is a threat and that is the promise. And it is not an abstraction. We heard about Rusty Bauer's very real, very disturbing experience. Obviously, we saw how the threats of violence played out in a devastating way on January 6th, when there was real violence. And even now, and this is sort of bubbles underneath the surface of the news, but I will tell you, as someone who watches this, that not a week goes by without a story of some election official or educational civil servant or health administrator 
getting in the crosshairs of the most vile faction of the MAGA right and finding themselves besieged with harassment and threats. The most recent victim is Boston Children's Hospital. Yes, the Children's Hospital, the top rated pediatric hospital in the country, the kind of place that treats kids with rare diseases, complex conditions, more than any other facility in the nation. Parents and families travel from all over the world to receive care at Boston Children's. And you can imagine if you're taking your little tiny child who is sick, what a profoundly important place that is to you and the doctors are. And one of the many services they provide at Boston Children's Hospital is gender affirming care for transgender youth. And that has recently made Boston Children's, the place that cares for sick kids, a target of malicious misinformation spread online. Some on the far right accuse the hospital of performing hysterectomies on minors, which of course is not true, but that didn't matter. No, the lies spread like wildfire as right-wing figures on Fox News and Infowars and social media and the whole MAGA crew whipped up a frenzy claiming the hospital, which cares for sick children, was performing, quote, child mutilation. And as surely as day, Follows night, Boston Children's began receiving violent threats. This evening, Boston Children's Hospital under attack. Doctors and staff facing threats of violence. After the hospital says it was the focus of a social media campaign about its treatment of transgender youth. Boston Children's says the posts are not accurate. Even so, the hospital says the fallout has been extensive from threatening emails and phone calls to threats of violence. And then the same people who helped whip up the frenzy that led to these threats, including a bomb threat. The same people started claiming it was all hoax. They said the threats were not real, that they were a false flag. There was even one conservative activist portraying himself as an investigative reporter who was on the case, alleging that, well, no one called the police about a bomb threat. But it was not a hoax. It was exactly what it looked like. Yesterday, the FBI announced that they have arrested and charged a Massachusetts woman, a diehard Trump supporter who donated more than $6,000 to his fundraising, com fundraising committees, with making a bomb threat against Boston Children's last month, just one of many in recent weeks. The hospital has received dozens of hoax threats, including harassing phone calls and emails, individual death threats, and threats of mass casualty attacks. We arrested Catherine, Kathleen Levy of Westfield, Massachusetts, for allegedly sending a threatening communication to Boston Children's Hospital and its employees. On August 30th, the hospital received a telephonic bomb threat. The hospital operator answered the call, and the caller said, in part, quote, there is a bomb on the way to the hospital. You better evacuate everybody, you sickos. I mean, just take a step back for a second. I don't want to skip past this. This is a place that people come from all over the country with sick kids. They're a little kid who's got some rare disorder or genetic complication, and they are terrified and upset, and it's the worst thing that's ever happened to them and their family. And they're in their hospital with these people that are caring for these sick kids. And this place is getting harassed and threatened and fake bomb threats called in. Like, that's a real thing that's happening. It's all, it's very real. And that's a children's hospital. Everyone who operates in Republican politics, where they have a special venom for traitors, has to ask themselves, right, do they want to be the next Rusty Bowers or the next Boston Children's Hospital?